Hi, I'm Jose Tejeron. People often notice the autonomous behaviors of characters in simulation games like Civilization or Age of Empires. This can be achieved using iClone on Unreal Engine thanks to Realusion's crowd simulation and prop interaction with Motion Director. In this tutorial, I will show you how to customize actions for multiple actors for your simulation scenario, enabling them to interact authentically with their environment. We can bring large scenes to life, as in my example, where every figure adds vibrancy and dynamism, making every corner truly immersive. Using these tools is now easier than ever. If you have a new project in mind, you can use iClone's new AI search engine to find those 3D assets you have in mind. For example, if I want to sport mail, I just type it in Smart Search, and hundreds of options appear to use for my project. But this is iClone. We can customize our project as much as we want to make it just as we imagine it. That's why my favorite function of Smart Search, and the one I use most, is Image Search. It's normal that to create your creative project, you have several reference images. Now you can use them directly to get just what you want. In my case, for example, I want my character to have exactly the cap of my reference. Just drag the image, and the 3D asset I needed magically appears. ActorCore's huge gallery of 3D assets provides everything you need to populate your 3D scenarios and bring them to life. Their 3D scan characters have the realism we need, but at the same time are highly optimized for use on any PC. Also, they offer a really huge catalog of animations that is growing all the time. In this tutorial, we will start from several of them to create our own movements, as they are a perfect base to give life to our characters. If iClone already allowed us to animate characters with professional movements, now we don't even have to adapt them to our scene and needs, they can do it automatically. Thanks to the Emotion Director technology, now this character, for example, can water the plants without me having to use the timeline. We just place the Emotion Director prop for watering plants on the place where the watering can is, do the same with the plant to be watered, and use the Attach on the Phantom watering can to link it. This way, when we run the Emotion Director, no matter what the situation or the scenario, the character adapts its movements to the scenario and moves through it naturally. In this case, I have forced the character to move along an inclined plane while executing the plant watering animation, but the result still looks natural and dynamic. However, this tutorial is intended to help you get the most out of this Motion Director tool. Any of the movements in your library can be adapted to Motion Director so that you can use it in your projects as easily as possible. Let's start with the simplest and most commonly used Motion Director prop, the Actionable Motion Director. If we go to the menu bar at the top, the Create floating menu at the bottom, we can see the MD Prop menu. From all the options that are displayed, we will select the first one, Actionable. Having previously selected our new MD Actionable, we're going to go to the MD Behavior menu. Once in this window, we will go to the Behavior Settings section, where we will be working during the whole tutorial. To start editing the movement that our Motion Director will have, select it and click on the top button Add slash Delete Behavior. We will then get a floating window that will ask us which character should be used to edit the animation. Now we're ready to edit the animation, in this case, picking onions from the garden. For this, I bought a motion pack from ActorCore that has the perfect animation. Just drag it into the Perform section. To edit this animation on the character, click on it, and in the floating menu, select the option Edit Motion in Timeline. Now, as you can see, the animation is applied to the character and we can edit it, but if we want it to interact, we have to do an additional step first. It doesn't matter if you are in the MD Behavior Edit mode, you can go back to the scene at any time and enter the elements you want the character to interact with. In my case, onions and a box of harvested onions. The way to include them in the MD is simple. Right-click on the object, and in the floating menu, select Attach. Then we go to the scene and click on the MD Actionable. As you can see, I have additionally decided to create a semi-transparent blue material to work better, and I do recommend it. Once this is done, the only thing left to do is the fun part, editing the animation so that, in this case, the character grabs the onions one by one and drops them inside the box. An important part when creating our own MDs is that the objects can have the link property. Thanks to this, characters can carry objects in their hands, but it is important that before and after the object is linked to the character's hand, the object is linked to the actionable MD. If we go to the Modify window, we will see that in the Linkage section, I have already clicked on the Pick Parent button, and I have linked it with the MD actionable in the list of objects in the scene. If now I need to link it on the hand, I do the same process again, but this time clicking on the palm of the hand. However, this is very likely to cause several problems due to the transition between elements to which the object is linked. To fix this, we just need to go back to the timeline, pull down the constraint section of the object, and edit the link section. If we drag the beginning of the link we made to the MD actionable and moved it closer to the new link we made in the character's hand, the transition between both was only one frame. This way we didn't leave space for the transition, but don't forget to go back to the end of the animation to recreate the link with the MD actionable. It's better if the object is always linked to something. 
The other important part is with the reach effect, which is also very useful. In this case, the hand that should stay on the ground floats and doesn't stop moving. To solve this, we can create a dummy in the MD. If we click on our MD actionable and go to the modify window, we will see the edit structure button. When we do this, a window will appear in which we can add a dummy, which will be the object where the character's hand will rest if we click on the plus symbol. As gizmo object, we can select the hand reach if we want. But I think the best thing to do in this case would be to choose the hip reach since we don't need it to be on the ground. Once the menus are in place, we can go back to the menu bar and in animation, click on the reach target menu. Once the window is displayed, having previously selected the character, I select the left hand to the part I want to fix it to. However, in this case, when I click on the symbol on the ground, the hand goes to the inside of our MD, no problem. If we go to the reach target section of the same window, we can click on the three dots next to the asset to which it has been linked. This way we will see all the elements associated to our MD. The result is magnificent, and the best thing is that if you are on ground that is uneven, I can even adjust this reach target so that the hand adapts to the environment without having to edit the whole animation itself. When we go back to the timeline, if we fold down the reach section of the character, we can edit when their influence begins and ends. This way the movement will feel natural and will be free of extraneous movements. Finally, when we have all the animation ready, we proceed to save it into our MD. To do this, we right-click on the animation, the timeline, and select the option Select Collection Range by Selection. When we do this, we will see how all the elements in the timeline appear selected under a blue line in the Collect Clip section. If we right-click on this blue bar, we can select from the floating menu the option Overwrite Selected MD Behavior Motion. This will store the animation in the MD, but you are not done until you click on the Apply button in the MD Behavior. Now, we can see how the character approaches the position and naturally adopts to the pose. As you can see, I have duplicated the onions that the character collects, and I have made them disappear from the box as soon as he leaves them. This is a very common technique in video games in relation to NPC animations. Since the animation is going to be played continuous times by the NPCs, it is necessary for the onions to stay in place so that they can be collected again. This way, it is easy to make the viewer believe that the onion picked up by the character was behind and the trick is not noticeable. If we want to create an MD prop with link effect ourselves, it's not that much more complicated. And so I'm going to give you an example that I'm going to create from scratch. I'm going to make a simple MD of a person who picks up a box of cucumbers and carries them to another point on the stage. I already have the box of cucumbers, the character, and I'm going to make the animation myself. Look how simple it is. Using the new tool AccuPose, I only have to start posing the body of the character, and automatically the rest of the body adopts to the desired pose. I link the box to one of the hands and the other one to the box. Now all I have to do is make his body rise, and thanks to the AI technology of AccuPose, his body straightens up perfectly just as the person would naturally. This way I not only save time, but I also quickly achieve a more natural and pleasing looking animation with much less effort. After applying a semi-transparent material to the box, we can go to the Create menu at the top and, at the bottom of the drop-down menu, click on MD Prop. In turn, several options will open up. We'll have to choose the Portable option in this case. And within this, we will have to choose the Base Template option. If we take a look, a new element called MD Portable will appear in the Scene window. If we unfold it, we will see that inside it, there is an MD Place Point, and inside it, the MD Object. If we deploy the contextual menu by right-clicking on the box, we will see that the option to make an Attach that we can link with the MD Object. Okay, now the good stuff starts. First, we must remember to click on the MD Place Point because that's what we will be working on. Then we must go to the MD Object window because it will be in that menu where we will create the magic. Once this is done, we will see that we have categories in this window. We will always be working on the Behavior Settings one. For the moment, we will focus on the first of them, the Pickup one. If we click just below that name where it says Grab Average, a name that we can change later, we can click on the Add slash Delete Behavior button. Then we select the character on which we'll have the animation in the behavior window. And the character will always be placed at the center of the scene. Once this is done, if we click on the character, we'll be able to access the animation we created before. To use this animation in the pickup, we must right click on our animation in the motion section and select Select Collision Range by Selection in the drop down menu. Now that it is selected, we right click again and in the drop down menu, we select Overwrite Selected MD Behavior Motion. After this, we go back to the MD Behavior and click on the Apply button, and follow the same steps with the Mixer Idle section. And let's see what this looks like. 
when we run the motion directory, we see that the character executes the animation correctly, but the object does strange things and the idle position executes a looping animation. Let's go back to the MD behavior window to focus on the object. If we click on the object, in this case, the cucumber box, and in the timeline show the constraint section, we can see where the problem is. The box is bound to the character's hand as soon as the animation runs, but it's not until almost halfway through the animation the character actually picks up the box. The solution is simple. I replace any links in the box with the placement point link. Then I go to the exact point in the timeline where the character grabs the box. And at that point, I place the box link in the character's hand. The box still gives me problems because I have to place the start and the end of the link correctly in the constraint. But remember that the best way to avoid problems is to link the object to the placement point at the beginning of the animation. To do the mixer idle correctly, first we're going to do the put down. And in my case, it'll be enough that in the drop down menu of the animation, I reverse the animation. In just a couple of clicks, I also adjust the link in the box and the closing animation is ready. Now with the same animation and having corrected the link of the object, we enter to edit the mixer idle. So that you don't notice that this is an animation loop, we must reduce the animation to a single frame, discarding the rest of the animation. The problem was fixed, but now we can see that there were a couple of other problems. Which is okay, they're typical problems. On the other hand, the box is marked as set as surface, which makes the character's feet collide somehow with the box as if it were part of the floor. The solution is simple, select the box in this case and uncheck the set as surface option in the modify window in the prop section. The next problem is that the walking character moves too stiffly, almost comically. For this, Motion Director offers a fantastic tool called Mixer Weights. To open it, just go back to the MD behavior window and click on the symbol to the right of the mixer idle section. As you can see, we can determine the intensity to which our idle animation is applied to each of the bones. We'll lower the intensity, the greater the influence of the walking animation in this case. At the top, we have a series of useful presets, among which is upper body, which is just what we need. When we apply this option, we can see how the weight of spine one and two is automatically reduced. When we check the animation again, we can see that now the character moves more naturally and without strange problems. If we want the objects to have an additional animation, we can also add it, as in this case. The character grabs the branch and due to the weight, part of it rests on the ground while the other part is bent by the character's hand. For this, the object in question must have a skeleton so that we can animate it. And this way we can add an animation to the trunk that matches that of the character's hand and then, as with the box, make the character carry the branch while walking. To do this, with the object we want to animate selected, we must go to the Modify menu and open the Edit Animation Layer window. In this window, we can see the parts of the object skeleton. The system does not support the animation of the object, so if you create the skeleton yourself, you must do it thinking about the movement that you will create with the first one. Once we finish with the animation of the object and save the animation of the character, a new floating window will pop up. To finish, we must accept to save the prop trigger motions. In my case, I just realized that the character should be able to access the farming areas, but they're fenced off. No problem, we can use the MD passing through creatively to avoid problems like this. Since the fence is low, adult characters will have no problem passing over it. Passing through allows the character to pass through a place in both directions, usually used to open doors and allow the characters to enter and exit buildings. In this case, it'll be enough for me to create a single animation so that to go through the fence in the opposite direction, I will only have to turn the animation in the opposite direction. To use it, go back to the MD prop menu, and in this case, select bi-directional. As it is very thin, we will have to place the gizmo objects. To do this with our MD selected, we will go to the menu modify, and in the section MD in this window, we will have to click on the edit structure. This will open a drop-down window that will show all the gizmo objects, allowing us to select them. In this case, I need its body to be as close to the edge as possible. Once the MD animation has been saved in both directions, we can see that when executed, the character approaches the berry with total naturalness. He executes the custom animation so naturally that it seems to be part of the same animation. As there is no limit to the number of MDs we can place on a stage, I can afford to place one or two MDs on each line of the barrier. Finally, there are two additional properties that can be very useful. The first would be to be able to animate the strength of the texture of an object's material. This is very useful when, as in this example, we want the character to turn on a light. The process is very simple, but you must remember to create the animation within the addition of our MD. 
Once you have gone to the material section of the object linked to the MD, click on the texture you want to animate. In this case, the glow texture. Then at the bottom, you'll find the parameter strength. In my case, I will not only make the character turn on the plant light, I will also add an animation to regulate the intensity of the light. When we save the animation, as we saw before, I will get a floating window to confirm that I can save this parameter. Note that if it doesn't appear, there is no way this additional section will be saved. The result already looks brilliant, but it will look even more brilliant when we move the project to Unreal 5. The second possibility is to use the morphs of an object to make an animation. It may not seem very useful, but it has an infinite number of applications to make the elements with which our character interacts look dynamic. In this case, I've created a ground model that will be indistinguishable from the rest of the ground surrounding the character. I use ZBrush to create the Morris after applying the animation to the character to see the approximate place where the shovel went into the ground. If you import the model in FDX format into iClone, it will always keep these morphs, and you can edit their animation by clicking on the Morph Animator option in the Motion section. As in the previous case, you have to create this animation only when you are editing the animation of your MD. And make sure you save the prop trigger motions when the window appears. And as you can see, the result is infinitely better than if the character just plunges the shovel into the ground. Note also that when the animation ends, the morph slowly returns to their base value. As with the light, we can add a second animation to turn off the light or to cover the holes in the ground. But it's much easier to simply return to their initial state after a while. Finally, we have gone through the basics of all the MD types, but I'm sure you'll be able to find new uses for them with more animations. It's great to have all the MDs in our own list. This way, we only need to create the MD prop moves once. Then, placing the MD props wherever you want on the stage is super easy and fast. This allows us to bring a whole street to life in just a couple of clicks. Then it will be the characters themselves who will walk towards them with precision and naturalness to interact with the props. After placing all the characters in the scene and recording with Motion Director their movements, I exported them with the iClone plugin to Unreal Engine 5.5 quickly. In this last version, we can apply Nanite to the characters themselves, which allows us to have many animated characters in the scene with a lot of detail without having performance problems. Finally, you can see what the final result looks like. The space is not only more dynamic, it is lively and eye-catching. And the characters don't just walk around the stage for no reason. They interact directly with the stage, modifying it physically and visually. Just imagine how long it would have taken to animate each character one by one, how much time it would have taken to adapt them to the terrain and each element of the scenery. Thanks to this technology, we can even afford to place many more characters without much effort, allowing us to dare to place more characters in the scene. If in addition, as in this case, the final project is a video render, we can dare to make animations even longer than necessary to ensure that the final result has no limitations. All of this without the extra effort of adding one or two more minutes of animation for each and every character. I hope the final result will encourage you to try this new technology, especially if you already have several animations in your library. And I assure you that the change will encourage you to place more characters and animations in your scenes. Don't forget to subscribe to the Reolution channel for more video tutorials like this one.